Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Steve and this is my racing game development series. Um, I'm basically building a racing game with Unity and I'm sharing my development process. So in this video we're just going to be looking at the latest build. Um, so just to catch anybody up who hasn't been paying attention, I've been working on the open world, specifically um, finishing the landscape, the roads, the buildings, the street lights, the vegetation, the lighting, AI traffic routes, and traffic lights for this open world area, or this section of the open world area. Um, I'd like to build another section or two to complete the open world, but I want to finalize this area first. So in this video, we're basically I'm celebrating a milestone because I have AI cars driving around the city, which is super awesome. I've been waiting about two months for this since I laid down my first piece of road. And it's always been in the back of my mind, what is it going to look like when these cars actually get in? And now they're in, so I'm just super happy. And you're probably noticing these cars are like driving into streetlights. They're going to be colliding with each other at intersections when they need to make a right-hand turn. Um, anyway, that, that's basically the backstory. Let's go ahead and start driving around. So in the last video, we were w without any of the AI cars in our viewport. There were about 100 spawned into the scene, but they were all at a specific point in the route. They were basically all on the same road. Um, in that build, when there were no traffic cars in the scene, we were running between 90 and 100 frames per second. And when we got in front of all of those AI cars, we dropped down to about 75 frames per second. So you might notice that we took a little bit of a dip. So now we're, we're basically hovering around 60 frames per second for the most part. There are currently 380 AI cars in the scene. That's a lot. They're all being controlled by the C Sharp job system, and that's using the Burst compiler to make sure all of the, the CPU logic processing is happening very quickly. Uh, it's being spread across all of the available cores on the machine, which means uh, there's just better performance on the main thread um, because I'm, I'm not bottlenecking it as much. Um, that being said, there's a lot of room for optimization I don't really need 380 cars driving around the scene right now. It's cool to know that there's just always cars driving around and and I could do different things with those cars, like make some of those racers and try to find a way to make them interactable. There's a lot of things that I can do with them, but one of the th directions that I'm thinking about taking it is creating a pooling system. So I would specify how many types of each type of prefab I want to make. For for example, I have six prefab cars in this scene right now, and that's it. So you're going to see a lot of the same car model. Um, I want to create about two dozen more car models. I think I have about 50 different types of AI cars. I I'm probably going to just create a, an AI vehicle for each of them. Um, but what I want to do, instead of having them all just driving around and using their their LOD type system that I wrote for them, so basically they have some type of culling on them, which reduces the rendering overhead. Um, so when the player cannot see them, their mesh renders turn off, so the wheels turn off, but they're still moving. And the the actual car body mesh turns off, their brake lights and their headlights turn off. Basically anything that has a rendering overhead is being turned off, but the actual vehicles themselves are still moving, they're just invisible. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a pool that will be spawned and have all of these vehicles basically respawn, or not spawn, basically move them around to where the player's current location is. Um, and that will make it so I don't need to have 400 cars in the scene if I want this many cars on the road. Um, 
and if I do make the open world bigger, um, I'm going to have to scale up that amount of cars. So if I increase the size of the open world by by three, I would have to have maybe 1,200 cars to have this volume of traffic in the scene. And even with that, they're all going to be just doing random stuff. And most of those cars will never be seen by the player. Um, so creating a pooling system will help me reduce the CPU overhead and get those frames per second back. So I could, my goal is to basically get back up to 70, 80, maybe 90 frames per second. And also doing that will avoid like a bunch of AI piling up in a specific area. And the reason all of these AI piled up is because when the cars tried to turn through this intersection, they were just going way too fast. So moving forward, I, I think the next steps are going to be to prefab out all of the different AI vehicle models, go through the scene and move all of the the street lights that are in the road out of the road uh, that a lot of when I added the the left hand turning lanes let me go find one um, have one somewhere over here so when I added these left hand turning lanes the roads became wider at the intersections so in a lot of these wider areas you'll be able to tell like this street light tipped over because a car hit it this is where it was standing. I need to move the street lights out of the road. The cars in the intersection, like I said, they're just not slowing down. So I need to set the speed limit for them when they're making right hand turns. That way they don't try to take this turn going 25 miles per hour and go off course and crash into another car. Those are the two most important things that'll help improve the traffic simulation. Um, then with the prefabs, obviously, I'll have more variety of cars. So once all of those three things are in place, I'll probably start thinking about how I want to do the pooling system. Right now, I'm thinking of a quadrant type system where there would be trigger areas that are defined and there's waypoint routes assigned to those trigger areas. And when the player enters a new area, it would spawn cars around it but it would always kind of keep updating in the background um, and check and see how many active vehicles there are and kind of do stuff like that um, I don't I don't really know if anybody's ever done anything like that I'd be curious to hear about what you've done to solve the object pooling for a traffic simulation issue um, other than that, I'm just going to be thinking about some different types of logic that I can use to, to set that up. But at this point, I, I, I'm driving around and there's just traffic jams everywhere because I need to fix the issues that I've been talking about. And anyway, I, I'm just super happy to know that there's 400 cars being processed in the scene right now and I'm running at 60 frames per second. I honestly expected the scene to run at 15 frames per second. Um when I set it up in the Unity editor and ran it the first time, it was about 15 to 20 frames. And then I thought when I built it, uh, there's no way it's going to be over 30. So when I actually hit 60, I was, my, my jaw kind of dropped. I was like, wow. Um, I spent a lot of time working on optimization and it's probably too much time. And sometimes maybe I don't think you ever spend too much time for op on optimization, but when you're doing that, you just feel like like you want to get something done. And optimizing something doesn't make it feel like you're making progress on your project. But once I actually put all of that content into the scene and, and press play, and I saw that the performance was actually decent and acceptable, it just made me so happy. Um, anyway, that's where I'm at. Still working on traffic. Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.